Oh, if you want to know what Britney Spears says about Kevin Federline in this book, I'm here to tell you. And as a preview, I'd say cancel K-Fed, but K-Fed never happened. You can't cancel someone that never took off, but I'm going to try. First of all, I just want to say I kind of now understand why she fell for K-Fed having read this book because it came on the heels of this heartbreak from Justin and feeling her entire life from her family that nobody loved her as she was. But Kevin Federline seemed to at least pretend to love her as she was. She describes meeting him and having an instant connection with him. And then she describes getting in a pool with him where he held her for hours and she had never been held like that before. Brittany, you can, you can be held like this again, I promise. And this particular passage broke my heart. I feel like a lot of women, and this is definitely true of me, can be as strong as they want to be and play this powerful role. But at the end of the day, after we've done our work and made our money and taken care of everyone else, we want someone to hold us tight and tell us everything's going to be okay. I'm sorry, I know it sounds regressive, but I think it's a human impulse. We want to feel safe and alive and sexy all at the same time. And that's what Kevin did for me. So I held on to him like there was no tomorrow. And apparently she didn't even know that K-Fed already had a toddler and a baby on the way when they met. She said, still, I had no idea when we met that he had a toddler, nor that his ex-girlfriend was eight months pregnant with his second baby. I was clueless. I was living in a bubble and I didn't have a lot of good close friends to confide in and get advice from. Well, not much has changed there. I had no idea until after we'd been together for a while and someone told me, you know he has a new baby, right? Now apparently when Sean Preston was little, this is when Kevin Federline decided he was going to be a rapper. He started recording a lot and just kind of flat out ignoring Britney. Here's what she said about dropping by the recording studio. Sometimes I'd drop by a studio where he was working and it seemed like a clubhouse. I could smell the weed wafting out of the studio door before I even walked in. He and the other guys would all be getting high and it felt like I was in the way. I wasn't invited to their party. The mother of your child, Miss Brittany Jean Spears, was not invited to the recording studio party? <laughs> Here she describes their relationship starting to fall apart. Maybe this is the way married couples are, I thought, as Kevin and I grew more and more estranged. You take turns letting each other be a little selfish. This is his first taste of fame for himself. I should let him have it. I gave myself pep talks. He's my husband. I'm supposed to respect him, accept him on a deeper level than I'd accept someone I was just dating. He's the father of my kids. His demeanor is different now, but if it changed, it could change back. People say he's going to break up with me while I have tiny children, like he did with the mother of his first two children when they were infants, but no way. How he was with his other family won't be the way he is with me. She describes being in denial that he was kind of in the process of leaving her without leaving her. And here's another time she went to New York to see him when he was recording. He'd been so out of touch that I thought we needed to have some time together as a family. In the city, I checked into a nice hotel, excited to see my husband but he wouldn't see me. It seemed like he wanted to pretend I didn't exist. His manager who had been on my team for years wouldn't see me either. He was on Kevin's team now and it seemed that they were done with me. And she says, Kevin was just so enthralled with the fame and power that he basically ignored her. She says when she went on that trip to New York, she should have known the relationship was over, but she was still holding on to hope. So then Kevin went to a recording studio in Vegas and she went there to visit him. She says she showed up and his head was shaved. And then she said, he was in the studio all the time. He really thought he was a rapper now. Bless his heart, <laughs> because he did take it so seriously. If you speak Southern, you know that bless his heart is a read. And she describes full-time parenting the kids while he was running around doing this, by the way. So then she shows up to a music video shoot that Kevin is doing, and again, he doesn't want to see her. They didn't even let her into the set. She watched through the window as they were smoking. And now she has her second child and she's basically parenting alone as Kevin runs around trying to build a career for herself and she was spiraling with perinatal depression. And how Kevin wasn't there to support her, but the paparazzi's caught it all. Then she describes him getting an offer to do a Super Bowl ad that actually was making fun of him, but he didn't care. And after that, she pretty much never heard from him again. And she said, he told everyone else that being a father was everything to him, the best thing in his life. You wouldn't know it because the sad truth is he was away a lot. At this point, allegedly, Kevin wanted to divorce her, but he didn't want to be the one to file. He wanted her to do it. So her team basically manipulated her into filing for divorce, even though she still wanted to make it work. She said he knew that it would make him look better publicly if I was the one who filed. And basically he tricked her because then, because she filed for the divorce, it meant that she had to pay his legal fees. And because legally I had set the divorce in motion, I would be held responsible in the press for having broken up my young family. So there you have it. Once again, people manipulated Britney Spears into looking like the bad guy in a breakup. Britney, you don't need men. Women are better. Here's my call for Britney to be a lesbian.